Well, I'm first going to introduce myself. So I'm Thomas Spignall. I work for EA SPD, which is um, short but not short enough for the European Association of Service Providers for Persons with Disabilities. Uh, and we represent over 10,000 service providers throughout Europe, not only in the EU, but also uh, in neighboring countries, Moldova, uh, Turkey, so forth. Um, we, we work on, on two or three main sort of aspects. On the one hand, we, we try and to uh, lobby the European institutions and the Council of Europe, um, sort of defending their interests. So on the one hand, we, when we do the lobbying, we, we work a lot on also on, on social services and, and everything that's linked up to that. And uh, but we also work on on disability-related issues. Uh, we we try and do so from from a from a service provision perspective, to not overlap or over uh, go through the, the the DPO, the DFI, who who represent <coughs> the people with disabilities themselves. So that's the, the try and balance which we, we try and find, and, and it's not always easy, but that's, uh, that's what we do. And we also work with, uh, we do about, 20, we, I think, manage or are involved in over about 20 European funded projects um, related to innovation and service provision for persons uh, with disabilities. Um, so that's sort of the, the general overview. Um, and also in, in, in Ireland, we think we have, about, we have four, four members. Uh, we have our red organisations like, like DFI, uh, sorry? And the Federation of Umbrella organisations, yeah, federations, and, and we also have single member uh, organisations. Um, and so, thanks a lot, John, for, for introducing the, the topic and, and why European policy is important to, to everybody here. Um, I, I, I would fully agree with, with the fact that this is, on the one hand, a bit of a, a training, but I would also assume and argue that it's also a training for myself insofar as on the European semester, <coughs> you really are the experts on what's going on in Ireland and, and, and what's not going on in Ireland. Uh, and therefore, uh, I think that's, that's really what I'm going to try and help, is to allow you to give the tools for you to be able to um, bring up the issues which, which, which you're encountering on, on a day-to-day -day issue and, um, and, 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 and try and bring them up towards your national government, but also towards uh, European uh, policy making. Um, well, before I start, um, although I'm not a, a bureaucrat and a, and a bureaucrat and I try not to be, I do spend half my time with, with those people, so I do sometimes use terms and words which um, I don't think many people understand. So if I do use some of those words, please stop me and, um, and, and ask me what I'm, what I'm talking about uh, in, sort of in reality. Um, so please don't hesitate to, to interrupt me um, on those topics. Um, so, the European semester is all about the Europe 2020 strategy. So, it's a strategy which, which was um, uh, drafted and written and agreed by the European Council. The European Council brings together um, the 28 member states, the 28 governments, uh, and who they all agreed to a 10 year strategy on where Europe should be heading uh, over the next 10 years until 2020. Um, the overall sort of aim which was agreed is that we should try and achieve uh, smart, sustainable and inclusive growth. Um, <coughs> it's quite a, a general topic and quite a, a lot of words, but what does that actually mean? Well, they tried to, 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 to really oper operationalize it, to put it into to pure terms, and they decided to divide it into five sort of headline targets. Um, those targets were uh, related to employment, so reducing uh, unemployment levels throughout Europe. Um, uh, research and development, they believe that uh, more investment in, into research and development will lead to, uh, to modernize the European economy and, and, and help us be more competitive with the outside world and, and with, with uh, the new growing um, sort of superpowers, India, China, so forth. Um, then there's also a headline target on energy and, and the environment. So. Um, investing more in renewable energies and trying to fight climate change, uh, things like that. And then also education, trying to reduce the amount of uh, early school leavers uh, throughout Europe. Uh, and last but not least, the, um, the poverty targets, which is to try and reduce poverty throughout Europe. So this is sort of the, it's very simple, it's obviously a lot more than that, but this is the, basically what the Europe 2020 strategy is, is to try and modernize the European economy as a whole, um, through, through working on these five topics and trying to 
achieve what they call um, smart, sustainable, and inclusive growth. Um, and and so that's that's what the overall objective of the European of the EU over the next ten year or over the next six years now uh, is going to be focused towards achieving this. Um, obviously, and, and you can see this at the bottom, there appears to be some conflicting objectives uh, in European policy making, um, but also national policy making. Uh, I always, I think it's always quite easy for for people in, 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 uh, in the countries who say, oh, it's always Brussels, it's always Brussels, but a lot of the policy making which has been made in Brussels comes from the European Council, which is in fact the national governments. Obviously, countries like Germany and France and the UK have maybe uh, more of a word to say than, than the medium or the, the, the smaller countries in terms of population, uh, and that has to be taken into account. But, but, it's also, but the Irish government also has, ha, has a word to say, and, and I think it's, it's sometimes a bit too easy just to always blame the bureaucrats in Brussels when it's also um, our own national governments who are, who are pushing for this, or at least agreeing to, to these policies. Um, the European semester comes into the Europe 2020 strategy insofar as it's trying to coordinate national and European policies towards achieving these objectives. Um, and how are they doing it? So that the European semester is basically a dialogue between the, the countries and national governments and the European Commission, and where they're, they're exchanging on information and policies about what they're doing and more or less giving advice to one another on, on where, should, where, they should, where they should go. Um, the second slide here, which is um, that's an annual cycle of macroeconomic, budgetary, and structural policy coordination. I got that from the European Commission website. For me, that makes no sense. But basically, it's, quite, it's, it's not about um, picky, um, small policies. It's about the structural perspectives. It's about structural policies, um, reforms that, that Ireland must make, um, if it is to, to get out of the, the, the current crisis that, it, that, it, that it's in. Um, as I just said before, there are conflicting objectives. On the one hand, the European <laughs> Union is pushing for growth, investing in, in education, in, in, in employment, and fighting poverty, which often, maybe not always, but often uh, requires some, some levels of, of investment. Um, but then it's also on the second hand, there's, the, there's the, the fiscal compact, there's the macroeconomic and fiscal surveillance, there's all those tools which are very much about austerity. So there seems to, on the one hand, the EU is pushing for investment and growth, and on the other hand, it's cutting back on everything which, which can um, uh, get pushed to, to make sure that we can go in that, in that direction. Obviously, it, it's a bit more complicated than that, but there does seem to be some sort of um, conflict there. Why does the European semester matter to you? It's because, very frankly, um, the European semester is influencing national Irish policies, uh, such as the Action Plan for Jobs strategy, the Pathways to Work program, the Further Education and, and Training program, the Future Health strategy, and the Advisory Group on Tax and Social Welfare. All of these, I think, are policies which, which maybe might not honor all of them, but they're the national policies which have been put in place recently or will be put in place in the next few years. And they have been a result of the discussion between Ireland and uh, the European Commission to try and achieve the, the, the targets um, set out, to try and achieve the Europe 2020 um, objectives. Um, so you can see that these topics really are very much um, uh, used to, to our sector. I'm sure we have we have a lot of we already have a lot of um, uh, sort of arguments and, and input put into these these policies at, at, at national level. I'm sure the DFI and John uh, works on these topics. Um, there, are, there are three key documents uh, in, the, in the European semester. Though in fact, in reality, there are more documents. There are probably about 10 different types of documents. But um, I mean, I've been working on this topic for a few years, and it still confuses me. So I think um, first thing for, I mean, let's focus on, on the three main documents first, and maybe over the next few years, we can start working on, 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 on the other ones and, and sort of integrating them into, into our work. Um, so there, there are three main documents. The, um, the first one is the Annual Growth Survey. It's published by uh, the European Commission in November each year. Uh, and it's also discussed by the European Council, so the Irish government would have input into it. And it sets the, the overarching priorities of the European Union for that year. Um, generally speaking, they're, they're, they're rather of economic nature. 
uh, and most of the time uh, focusing on, on, on austerity measures and fiscal consolidation and whatever that means, uh, really. Um, so each November, they, they produce five overarching priorities for the whole of the European Union. Um, this uh, annual growth survey also comes with a staff working document, which is um, the European Commission's analysis of what the Irish government has been doing over the past year to achieve certain tar the targets which, which has been agreed on. Uh, it's about a 40 to 50 page document. Um, it's more of a, of a summary, but it's really judging and analyzing what the Irish government is doing, what they think the Irish government is doing well and what they think is, it, it should be doing um, better. Uh, you can find uh, it in the, in the briefing, which I think uh, you all have. If not, just send me an email and I, I, will, I will send it to you or an email to, to John. Um, this document for me is, is, although it's important because it, it shows the overarching, the, the, the whole EU <coughs> perspective, uh, it's quite broad and quite general and it's not really focusing on, on the day-to-day -day work which, which you um, do on a, on a daily basis. Um, the National Reform Programme is the second document. It's produced in April each year. Uh, MS is, is, is member state, so it's Irish government uh, produces a, a, a national reform program um, every year. Um, but actually, I will come back on that because Ireland, this, this is the first year Ireland has been involved in the European semester. Um, I forgot to mention that before. When, the, when Ireland was under the, the Troika, uh, it was not part of the European Semester program because they had their own sort of contract which they had to fill in, uh, which was different to, to the European Semester uh, projects and, and, and targets. Now that the, the, the contract uh, that the Irish government had with the Troika has been um, finalised, uh, now Ireland have been allowed to, not allowed, they're, now they've, they're integrating into the European Semester process. So this is the first year. Um, which this is, this, this is taking place. But, um, but last uh, April, the, the Irish government did produce a, a, a national reform program, which is meant to be a list of the policies it's doing to, to achieve the Europe 2020 targets. It's meant to be a bit visionary, that's the objective, but sadly, it's basically just a list of, of, of what they've been doing, and they're just more or less putting it in each sort of structure, but it's, it's, not, it's not really visionary, it's, it's a listing of what they've been doing, and I think it's, uh, it's, it's a, bit of a, a bit of a pity, because um, it could, this document could be a lot more than that, it could show what, what Ireland is doing to try and, and do on the long term, rather, rather than just the short term policies, uh, which it's doing on a, on a, on a month, uh, monthly basis. Um, so that's the, that's, this is the document which the national governments give to the European Commission. Uh, to inform them about what they've been doing, what they've been up to. Um, and then, based on this document, based on the National Reform Programme, the European Commission uh, analyses that, analyses what's happening in, in Ireland, what the policies which are being put in place, the weaknesses that they have. Um, they also analyse the, the Irish economy as a whole um, in a variety of fields. Mostly it's economic, it's more about the economic sort of targets and fiscal consolidation yet again. But, but as we will see later, we do have certain social or, or at least um, recommendations which have an impact over, over the social, um, social sector in, in each country. Uh, these are recommendations which are done by the European Commission to the member state every year. They, the island will receive recommendations from the European Commission about what they can do to, uh, to, to improve, to, to, to improve the, their economy, to modernize it, uh, and to make it more competitive, uh, and so on, and, and, and hopefully one day to make it a bit more social, uh, but that is not the case right now. Uh, as I said earlier, the country specific recommendations are, generally speaking, economic or macroeconomic, um, and have very little impact, input on, on the, sort of the social sector. But obviously, economic, budgetary policies at the end of the day, they will have an impact on, 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 on the work, on, on the social sector, but also on the lives of people with disabilities who, not always, but sometimes need, need um, support from the, from the social services sector. Um, in the second slide here, you can see um, that countries under the Troika don't receive CSRs. Ireland has now has got rid of the, the, the Troika, um, the Troika, which brings together, I think it's the European Central Bank, 
the IMF and the European Commission who, um, who bailed out the, the Irish um, uh, government a few years ago, but I'm sure you've, <laughs> you've, you've all heard about that. Um, and uh, so this is basically it. So the three main documents is the annual growth survey, the national reform program, and the country-specific recommendations. Three documents which are basically a dialogue between the member states and um, so the Irish government and the European Commission. So how to engage in this process, which uh, I'm sure I've, I've, I've already bored you with. Um, it, it seems quite, quite technical, uh, as I've just put it, but in reality, you're going to see it's actually uh, very much about uh, the knowledge which, which you all have on, on these policies and what's needed in, in Ireland. Um, and so how to, to engage in it. Uh, first of all, the, at European level, we've, we've joined up with other European civil society uh, organizations, uh, but also with the trade unions. Uh, where we're trying to work on this topic and bring together um, and try and make the European semester more social. As part of this work, uh, we also, I, I think, there's, um, if I understand correctly, there's a national pilot program in, in Ireland, which I think uh, some of you may be, may be part of, which I think is coordinated by EAPN the, uh, in, in Ireland. Um, but the, through the work that we've done at, at European level, we've done a, a toolkit which is meant to help national organizations engage within the European semester process, start talking with uh, the national governments, uh, your, your own national government on this topic, trying to have a, a sort of uh, have input into that process, but also discuss uh, and, and exchange with the European Commission on uh, country-specific recommendations. Um, so I would invite you to all um, read uh, the, the toolkit, which I think I have a few copies here, but you can find it on, on our website or on the Semester Alliances. Uh, website. It's really a great tool if you really want to um, to have an input uh, input into this into this machinery. Um, then the second sort of task would be to identify who's responsible for the European semester in your own government. Um, I can also help you in that direction, give you one name, and it might not be that person, but he could at least push you in the right direction and and give you an email or a phone number um, about who you can contact if you want to to start working. Uh, with your own government on, on the European semester and advising them on or providing them with input from, from our perspective on what they should be saying or what they could improve or what they're not saying uh, and so forth. Um, so I can help you with that. If you identify who's responsible, then you can ask to participate in the European semester process. The countries, the national governments, they're not obliged to consult civil society. The commission has not or cannot um, that even though they encourage national governments to, to consult civil society in this process, um, there's no um, obligation for the, for the government to do so. But nonetheless, they do have, they're, they're strongly encouraged, there are certain tools uh, which, which could, um, could be helpful to try and encourage the government to, to provide, to allow you to provide input into their work. Um, and, uh, and I can also help you with that providing the right sort of phrasing and the right sentences. And normally they, they, should, they should, at least to a certain extent, allow you to, to participate in, in the process and have, have some feedback. Um, and so then basically uh, following the discussions with, with the, the responsible in the ministry, you will know more or less how they would like you to have the input, but then you would need to work on creating the input. Um, what can our sector um, what can the disability sector say um, to the national government uh, about what they're saying and what they're doing and what they should be doing uh, differently? Um, so we need to um, develop common positions among, among ourselves, which we will be doing later, and, um, and trying to co develop a few key messages. I don't think we can do 20 different messages about what the, what the government should be doing because they just won't listen simply and purely, and maybe we don't have the time to do that. What we can do is to focus on creating maybe five or six messages, but giving them strong technical arguments backed with data and information like that. It doesn't have to be numbers. It can also be um, qualitative data. So uh, what you're experiencing on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis about how the measures by the uh, Irish government, how they're impacting upon your upon your day-to-day -day work. Um, and I think that that's... I think focusing on, on four or five messages rather than 20 would be, would be quite useful here. Um, 
then it's about feeding into into the so based on the discussion that you will be having with your national government and the messages which you be you will have developed you can then feed them into um, into the, the national reform program and the work but that's really not, that really depends on on your relationship with with the responsible in the ministry um, some ministries involve civil society a lot others don't involve them at all um, I think Ireland would probably be somewhere in between um, and so it's about I, I don't really know at this stage uh, how much input um, the, the Irish government will allow you to, to have but firstly it's really important to have the messages um, ready even before you're, you're, you know how you're going to have the input um, and then if the national government doesn't listen to you which um, well, as with all governments or public authorities, sometimes that's not that's not often the case. Uh, you can also bypass them to a certain extent. I don't like using the word bypass, but you can also speak to uh, the European Commission and tell them about what the national government is not saying, because the national government is not going to say things which are not favourable to, to the work that they are doing. So you can also sort of, to a certain extent, bypass them, inform the Commission uh, about the real state of play in in your country. And then um, hopefully they will bring that back as a recommendation or as, or as advice to the to the national to your national government. So there's uh, working with your national government first, but also in case that really doesn't work out too well, you can also speak to the European Commission, um, who will who may or may not, but they they will generally speaking at least take your your opinions into account and your expertise into account, and then potentially hopefully maybe put them in their country-specific recommendations. Um, the tendency that won't really happen on the short term, because obviously that they're thinking they, they can only give six or seven recommendations to the Irish government. So the chances for our sector to have one of them would be quite limited. But at least they will be informed about what's happening. And they may put one or two words and, and push it and, and change the angle of what they're saying um, in the right direction. Uh, lobbying is, is something which is uh, you have to be quite patient with, and if it doesn't work on the first year, then then you have to wait for the next year or the year after, uh, and so forth. But but I think there is room to have input in, into this process and to really, which is an important process, um, uh, because it's really impacting uh, the Irish policies which are taking place today. Um, and lastly, it's important that with the messages that you've developed, um, hopefully as as a sector, I think we we represent quite a few different. Um, different aspects of the sector here today, uh, that we spread the, the, our messages with the press, with uh, our local, regional, European politicians, uh, other NGOs, creating alliances, uh, and also um, spreading our messages on, on social media to, so that people are aware of the problems. So even if our national governments or European uh, or the European Commission are not listening to us, at least the public, the general public, is aware of of, of the, the difficulties which which our sector is, is encountering is encountering today. <laughs> Um, now that sounds very um, maybe quite broad and quite complicated, but I think Louise will, will actually later will talk about some of the policies which have been brought up in, in the European semester and they're actually policies which you deal with and work with on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think that will help to ground this maybe European perspective onto the work that you do today. As I said, you're the experts uh, and you will be the experts on these national policies which I know about the European processes, but I don't know so much about the about what's happening in Ireland, about the national policies which are being put in place, and the messages should really be about what's happening in Ireland today. So um, I think Louise will talk about that briefly later. In terms of the timeline about how to um, how we will manage to to feed into this process, which, as I said, it deals on a date on a yearly basis. So each year, three documents are produced, and then the next year. The same three documents were produced with a few changes, and it's basically an evolving uh, process. Um, so, uh, for example, next year's documents will take into account what's been said this year, but also about will take into account hopefully the input from our organisations, for example. And so it would help to go towards um, the, over the overarching aim, which is to achieve the smart, uh, sustainable, and inclusive growth. Um, so basically now we should start trying to identify who, who's the contact in, in the national ministry 
Um, but I think we will talk about that later. Uh, now we'd also start developing key messages from our sector. Uh, maybe there'd be a need for, for other meetings or Skype meetings to, 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 to finalize this process. Um, but basically before, uh, well, before January, hopefully, we will have a few key messages with quite solid arguments uh, coming from, 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 from all of us here. Um, hopefully, we can produce just one document and not, I don't know how many people are, but 20 different documents. The aim is to, if we come together, then obviously the, the, the public authorities will, will listen to us much more. So hopefully, we can draft those by early January uh, or end of December. Um, and then feed them into to, to the national governments who will be who should be consulting civil society already. I don't know how they're doing that in Ireland. Um, that will be based on the discussions we have with with the, the, the contact and the ministries. Um, but they, they could be consulting, or they should be consulting with you now. But obviously, it's quite time consuming. So it's usually pushed towards early 2015. Um, and then once you have the national messages, uh, with help from ESPD, we can be able to transform them, transform them into what we call shadow country-specific specific recommendations. The country-specific recommendations are the recommendations given by the European Commission to the national Irish government each year. And we can draft shadow ones. So basically what we think the European Commission should ask the, uh, the national government to, to, to put in place. Um, as an example, what they've been doing, uh, the ones that, that the European Commission have, have asked uh, Ireland to, to, to put in place this year, I mean, there were seven in all, but there were, there were three which I think is, are more linked to, to our sector. Um, firstly, that they've asked the, the Irish government to advance the reform of the healthcare sector. I think that's something which, uh, which maybe touches, maybe not all of you, but some of you. I think the Irish government is working on that, and the Commission is encouraging the, the Irish government to go further in that, um, uh, but they also talk. They've also encouraged the um, the national the Irish government to pursue further improvements in active labour market policies, and in particular on the long term unemployed. Uh, so the Commission has seen that one of the key issues, macroeconomic structural issues in Ireland, is that there are is a high number of people who remain unemployed, but but uh, chronically unemployed on the long term. And it's about trying to get those back into into the uh, onto the labour market, if possible. Um, and I'm sure that there's somehow potentially a disability um, sort of perspective in there, uh, which we can take into account. And uh, another uh, country-specific recommendation from the Commission this year was to tackle low work intensity of households um, and address the poverty risk of of children. I think for me, to tackle low work intensity of households. Um, I think that's got a lot got to do with um, the um, the single mothers who stay at home in, in Ireland and, and are not in work. Um, they, that's what the Commission have have seen as an issue, and that's maybe something we can can have, have an input into, uh, and also address the poverty risk of children. I think that could be linked to to disability related uh, perspective, but we don't have to focus just on these recommendations. If we see there are different problems which have not been brought up, uh, then we should mention them also. Um, so I'm sorry for this rather long presentation, and it, it is quite a complex topic. Um, so if you have any questions, I don't know if you have time for questions, but if you have questions.